Compulsory busing began in Louisville, Kentucky in 1975 after Judge James F. Gordon ordered the Louisville and Jefferson County school systems merge to end segregation. Prior to that, the Louisville school system had approximately 96% African American students and the Jefferson County school system had about 96% white students. The ruling by Judge Gordon followed a lawsuit by the KCLU and NAACP to enforce desegregation that had been on the books since Brown versus the Board of Education in 1956. Since the different city-county school districts were divided by area, they were also separated largely on socioeconomic lines. The city schools that most black students attended were woefully under-resourced due to their tax bases. The hope of the lawsuit was that busing would allow for a better education for the African-American students in Louisville. When busing began, riots erupted in the southwestern area of Jefferson County. It got so bad, the National Guard had to be called in to curtail the violence. It was an ugly time uh, in this community. Uh, you, you have to admire the parents and the kids that sent those kids on those buses. You know, this community is still fairly much segregated. That's the only way you're going to desegregate the school system. We should do it in this fashion. Schools in the West End, which were the location of most of the African American community. So let me give you a, a graphic example. Central High School was the African American high school. It's where Dr. Lyman Johnson taught. When the school desegregation lawsuit was brought, Central High School's auditorium, half the seats in the chairs were missing. The windows were broken. I mean, they were broken. There was a dusty playground, didn't have a tree on it. As soon as that school desegregation went into effect, they put new windows in Central. They put seats in the, they fixed the auditorium and they planted trees out on the playground. That's why we desegregated. Mm -hmm. Because the school systems, schools in the African-American community were not up to grade with the white schools. Wagner was offering uh, more of a selection in classes. Uh, like I said, when I was filling out uh, my uh, classes for the 11th grade, I seen some classes that was being offered that Shawnee had never offered. So they were expanding, you know, their classes uh, at Wagner that they did not offer at Shawnee. So I didn't think that was fair because, um, you know, we were uh, selective to a few classes where we didn't ex expand on our learning environment, you know, where we could have took maybe geometry or calculus or something where it maybe not been offered at Shawnee, where it was offered, you know, at uh, Wagner High School. So, I mean, we were stuck, right. you know, in our learning where Wagner was offering more classes, but by us being, having those few classes, we, I don't think, I know I did not venture off to take those higher learning classes because I wasn't prepared. Were you upset but, about that? Well, I wasn't upset about that because, you know, I had learned, um, you know, my schedule had, had I was predicted what I was going to learn based in the school that I was in. I went to high school, went to elementary in the West End, went to middle school in the West End, and then I went to high school in the West End, and those classes were not offered. So no, I wasn't upset because I knew that I could not take those classes because I knew I wasn't able to pass those classes. So I took what I thought I could pass. Through busing, I think I've gleaned many blessings I really have. Initially, you look at it as, oh, I'm being bused and others were too. We were being placed in schools where we were not wanted and it's uncomfortable, but it was for the bigger cause and we need to advance that cause. 
We need to advance that cause of exposing children to other opportunities. Looking back, I now believe that busing was a necessary evil. It is now common to see interracial groups of friends in restaurants, in the workplace, and on campus. When I was young, this would not have been common or accepted. I think that busing helped bring black and white children together, and it educated them of their cultural differences and taught them that these differences were okay. For a long time, there were um, hurt feelings over the busing. Uh, a lot of people just did not think it was the right thing to do. People lived where they lived because they wanted to live there and were n not looking at the obvious that they lived there because sometimes it was the only place that they could afford to live. The separate but equal standard of education was not working. Um, schools that were predominantly uh, black in teachers and in students oftentimes had low scoring on standardized testing but as the school um, the standardized testing got uh, the schools got worse and worse scoring um, it just was a, a a bad situation that needed to be fixed. Those of us who are somewhat pro-desegregation have to look back and say, wait a minute, has that been worth that? One of my greatest concerns was black kids taken into a white environment that is unfriendly and would mess them up psychologically, and I think it has in many ways. So I was concerned about that. I saw black kids being brought into a society, into a setting that now told them they didn't look right. They didn't see themselves in the book any place. You don't talk right. That can wound you, and I think that happened. My brother, he didn't, he didn't have no bad experience. He just wasn't bad. And my mother, um, when I graduated from Wagner, my brother did not. Do you think your brother would have graduated from Shawnee if he had stayed I don't there? know. That's a good question. I don't know. I can't answer that. He may have. Personally, for me, desegregation has been a success. For me, it has been because I would never have gotten to experience some of the things I have experienced had it not been for integration. It worked for me. I can't speak for everybody else. I think it has been successful, and I also think that it has not been a success. It's both sides of a coin. It's about getting these kids educated and having them be able to have a dream. Have them be able to have a dream and be able to try and obtain something for themselves. That is the most important thing now. I'm a strong supporter of integration because I have seen and experienced for myself the doors it can open. Louisville remains a city dedicated to desegregation, and though there's not compulsory busing like the original setup in the 1970s, busing across the county still does occur. It just now takes place in a different form. Elena Samuels argues in The Atlantic that this commitment to desegregated schools is what keeps Louisville economically vibrant instead of its inner city failing like Detroit and other cities with similar, largely segregated housing patterns. When one asks anyone who was involved in busing in those first years their opinion of it, the answer is almost always that it was both positive and negative. It doesn't matter whether the person was bused as a student themselves, a parent of bused students, a community leader, or simply someone who lived in Louisville at the time, there is no one answer to whether busing then was good or bad. 
While the majority of students did not experience any violence to themselves or their buses those first days of busing, few people, if any, would say that compulsory busing was perfect. At the same time, few would say it was all bad. This is reflected in the oral histories reviewed and read, as well as the interviews done for this documentary. Busing exposed students in the Jefferson County public school system to a diverse set of people they most likely would not have met or been around otherwise. Looking back on compulsory busing then, people will always find its positives and negatives. 